Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Goldwing Docs. Before we get started, there is something that I need to deal with. This is a problem that's cropped up in the comments of many of the videos that I've posted in the last couple of years. And this same type of comment keeps coming up over and over again. And some of those comments have gotten really nasty. So we're gonna deal with that right now. All right, I got the message guys. No more hair comments in the videos, all right? I got it. I took care of the problem. Let's get on with this video. We're gonna be talking about a problem that gets posted on Goldwing Docs over and over again by all kinds of different people. I see it so often that I thought, you know, this is worth doing a video about. It's another electrical video. I know it's my forte. I love electrical stuff. And a lot of people are afraid of electrical, so maybe this will help you out. Typically, the messages posted on Goldwing Docs will go something like this. My bike has a problem that every time I step on the brakes or squeeze the brake lever, the radio shuts off. Or when I turn my turn signals on, the whole dash flashes on and off. Or when I turn my high beams on, the CB shuts off, that kind of thing. Basically completely unrelated systems, or you would think causing failures in other unrelated systems. Some people will say, well, it's because they, somebody went in there and started butchering the wiring. And yes, sometimes that is the case. A lot of people get into the wiring of motorcycles and do terrible things. People that definitely should not be working on motorcycles, but that's a, a topic for another video. What we're talking about here is seemingly unrelated failures that are almost always caused by bad grounds. So here we have a circuit, we have a, a, a radio, and then we have a tail light, and then we have a brake light. And you can see the brake light has a switch. Normally, the, I mean, obviously this is a very simplified version of the circuit, but you get the idea. There's a battery, it puts power through the device, and then the power returns back to the battery through the ground. The way our bikes are wired is the positive is switched. So the power comes from the positive of the battery or the alternator or generator or what have you. And then it goes through fuses and then it goes through switches and then goes to the device. And then all the devices go to the same ground, which then feeds back to the battery. We have negative ground vehicles, just like a car. So the entire frame is a ground. You could take a test light, connect it to the positive terminal of the battery and touch any piece of metal on the bike and the light will turn on because the bike itself is ground. That's not just the only ground. Yes, the frame is grounded, but there are wires that run around that are ground as well. And in our Honda Goldwings, a solid green wire denotes ground. There's actually three rule of thumb wiring colors in gold wings. Black and red are always 12 volts. One's switched, one's not. And green is always ground. So if you have a bunch of things that all need ground and they aren't gonna have separate uh, wires all being run to studs on the frame somewhere. So what they do is they'll have the grounds run together to a single point, sometimes in a connector where there's a whole bunch of connectors that are all connected together. And so all those wires together then connect to a single wire, which then runs to ground. And that's a way of concentrating grounds. That's actually a really common failure point, in both the 1500 and the 1800, is those, those collection of grounds. So let's look at this circuit here. We have a simple radio and a tail light and a brake light. The battery is supplying power to the radio and the tail light. And then when we close the switch, which is applying our brakes, there's a switch on our brake lever and our brake pedal that when we squeeze them or apply the brakes, it closes that switch and sends power to the brake light. So let's turn it on and we see we have power running to just the radio and the tail light, but then we squeeze our brakes and the power also runs to the, to the brake light, which turns on as well. Now there's a complete path for all these different devices. So now let's simulate a bad ground. Now a bad ground, is usually a partial ground. Sometimes you can have an, a wire that actually breaks and there is no ground. In those cases, a lot of the time, the power will find a way somewhere through a circuit to get to ground. For instance, uh, a light bulb. There might be, a light bulb is basically a resistor. It's, it, it provides resistance to the current. And sometimes there's enough low resistance that lets enough current flow through a light bulb that some other device can use it as a ground and so it will work until you 
turn on a, a switch somewhere else. That's possible for a broken ground where the ground is not connected. We can also have the much more common bad ground where you have a corroded terminal or a wire that's partially broken, but most, most often it's just corrosion that, that has caused a, a connection to go bad. Now the connection is not completely bad, it lets through some power, so it kind of acts like a resistor. So let's put a, a version of this circuit up, and you can see I put a, a symbol for a resistor here where it's simulating a bad ground. So that's basically a connection that doesn't let through all the current, it resists some of the flow of current. You can only get a certain number of amps through that connection because anything more than that, it simply won't let through, just like a resistor does. Let's add power. So you can see, just like before, our radio and our tail lights are operating. The reason why those are operating is because the radio and the tail lights, they don't draw a whole lot of current. They might be only an amp or two, and the bad ground connection is more than capable of handling that amp of current. So those things work normally. All right, so now you come up to a stop sign and you squeeze the brakes. Now we close the switch and we have the brake lights turn on. The light bulbs for a brake light are very high amperage, low resistance. That's in order to get them to glow brighter so they're, because your brake lights are obviously brighter than your tail lights. So it needs a lot of current going through there. Now electricity is always going to find the easiest path, the path of least resistance. So if it has a choice of a tail light and a radio, which don't draw much current, which by definition means they are high resistance, or it can take the easy route through the brake light, which is the path of least resistance. It's going to go through the brake light and then it will fight its way through that bad ground connection and back to the battery. So what happens when all the current is going through the brake lights? There's not enough left to power the radio and the tail lights, so they just shut off. So now you have exactly the situation we're talking about where, hey, when I squeeze my brakes, my radio shuts off. And this is why. So this is basically the theory behind a bad ground. Now you have to go and find the bad ground. And to do that, you're going to need some assistance, either a shop manual or electrical troubleshooting manual from Honda, or hey, there's Goldwing Docks, and there's lots of us on Goldwing Docks who have those manuals. And what happens to people on Goldwing Docks will say, hey, here's my symptoms, and this is what's happening. Sometimes what I'll do then is I'll look at the circuit diagram of, of their bike, and I'll pick out the components that they say are misbehaving. And I'll see, okay, well, they all share this wire and they all go through that connector. Or sometimes it doesn't make sense. So I'll ask some more questions. Hey, is this happening? Is this happening? Does this keep working? And we'll just narrow it down to, on the circuit di diagram to identify what is working and what's not, and then find the commonalities in that circuit. Find where they all share a ground. Where are they all sharing the same connector? Just basically look for the smoking guns of what might be causing all the different things that are malfunctioning to malfunction together. Once we've done that, then we can say, okay, well, it possibly could be connector C13 or C147, and here's where they are, and here's a picture of what they look like. Go check them out. That's basically the process that we use on Goldwing Docks. So if you have electrical problems like this, unexplained electrical problems, things that are affecting random other parts of the bike that don't seem to be otherwise interconnected, and you can't figure it out, come on over to Goldwing Docks forum, post your message, say, hey, I need some help. Myself or any of the other number of experts on Goldwing Docks will be there to help you out. If you have any other comments, suggestions, questions about this, leave them in the comments section below. And hey, if you like this video, click like, and please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out when you do that. Don't forget to hit that bell. Thanks for watching.